Hello knitters, Barbara Benson here. I am an independent knitwear designer who also likes to make videos here on my YouTube channel, Watch Barbara Knit. If you'd like to know more about my knitwear designs, please check in the description below. There you will find a link to my Ravelry page where you can look at all the pictures of all the patterns I have available and maybe get one for yourself to knit up. Also in the description below, you will find a link to the Watch Barbara Knits Facebook group. We'd love to have you come over and join so we can continue the conversations that we start here on the YouTube channel. And this video is very specifically kind of exemplifying this hand in hand way that Facebook and um, YouTube interact when you're a member of both. Um, I had a comment on the Watch Barbara Knits Facebook group from Adina, I believe, and she said she watched my Swatch Lab for the Bijou Basin Ranch Yak Wool Blend. Um, actually, I'm going to guess what it was, was this one, this one here, which is a... Um, well, maybe she also, I've seen a couple of them. She watched the Yak One one. The most recent one, the one I could lay my hand on is this one, which is a silk camel blend, but I also did a Yak Wool blend. I will link to both of them in the description below. But what those Swatch Lab videos are is me putting a yarn through its paces and seeing what that particular yarn likes because all kinds of blends behave differently and like different things. And on the Watch Barbara Knits Facebook group, Adina asked, um, she's interested in learning the properties of other yarn materials and how they can best be used. Now, whew, <laughs> that is a very, very big topic that I have spent most of my knitting career learning and I continue to learn new things every day, but I thought I would get a start on it. I replied to her on Facebook and said, any fiber in particular you're interested in? And she said she'd love to learn more about silk blends and bamboo and bamboo blends. And so I thought I would do a brief bit uh, covering some of those topics. Now, what we're talking about here is the fiber that a yarn is made up of. There are all different kind of yarns out there running a whole gamut of different fibers and the fiber content is a huge amount of how a given yarn is going to behave but also you always have to keep in mind that the yarn structure has almost as much to do with how a yarn is going to behave. We're not going to talk about structure right now, but what I'm going to talk about is fiber. When I say structure, what I mean, is it applied yarn? Is it a single yarn? Does it have a cable ply? Is it Z twit? There's, there's so many different ways to describe a yarn. But what I want to talk about today is fiber. And just as a starter, and again, there's so much more you can talk about the things that I'd like you to start understanding and maybe getting a grasp on are, I think you can look at three different elements that you can evaluate a yarn or a fiber based on, uh, which is memory, strength, and drape, okay? And now memory and drape are sort of two sides of the same coin. And you know what? I'm going to add a fourth one in there because, hey, why not? Insulation. So those are all a lot of the things that go into looking at different yarns. And I think first what I should do is define memory. And memory is the properties of a fiber that makes it remember the shape you knit it into and makes it have the desire to get back into that shape. When you wrap your yarn around the needle, you're setting the stitch size, which is why gauge is so important. You're making how big those stitches are. And memory is how much that yarn wants to stay in that shape and stay in that size. Um, Wool has very good memory. Wool 
if you look at the wool fiber, it has under like one of those fancy electron microscopes or something, or maybe even a really good magnifying glass, but you know, like looking at it, um, it has little tiny scales on it. And that's part of what makes it scratchy. And that is part of what makes it felt, but it is also what makes wool have memory because those little scales rub against each other and hold on to each other. And that makes wool very good at supporting its own weight and um, staying in a nice shape and not getting baggy. Now, one idiosyncrasy that I can point out is superwash. So the thing that makes superwash superwash is that it's a chemical or a mechanical process that smooths out those scales. And in smoothing out those scales, it makes it so it doesn't felt. But in doing that, it also reduces the yarn's memory. It makes those slide against each other easier, but that also is a drawback. So that is why superwash wool has a tendency to stretch under its own weight. Its memory is not as good. When you get into things like camelid fibers, when you get into alpaca and camel and things like that, they don't have as many scales, which makes them less likely to felt, but it also gives them less memory. You get into a fiber like silk, which is like smooth and extruded, it has almost no memory. Um, and cotton and other plant, plant fibers, they don't have a lot of spring back. They don't have a lot of pullback. The fiber doesn't come back, um, which neither of these, it's I mean, like not having memory isn't a bad thing. And having memory isn't necessarily a good thing. It just depends on what you're trying to achieve with that yarn. If you want a sweater with nice big poppy cables and that's going to keep its shape through a lot of wear, wool is going to be great because it has a lot of memory. Um, if you want a beautifully drapey shawl, really hefty wool is not going to be your best bet because that memory is going to fight it draping. And that brings me, I said memory and drape are kind of two sides of the same coin. Drape, and I have an example for you, is how well the fabric flows. And I have an example for you. This is 100% silk. Am I showing you the right side? So this is a 100% silk shawl. The yarn is from Neighborhood Fiber Company. It's gorgeous. But if you see how big of a shawl this is, if you see how big it is, but if I hold it like this and let it fall, it goes down to almost nothing because it has amazing drape. It's just almost flows like water. And because the silk has very little memory, when you block it into a sharp lace like this, it stays. It doesn't fight your block. It doesn't try to pull back from the block. So that is good drape or it just drapes well. We're not going with good, bad. But to show you, my chair is squeaky. This is 100% wool. And as you can see, when I put it on, it stands up by itself. See? Now, if this was made out of 100% silk, even at the same weight, the same density, it is going to completely collapse on itself because it's not going to stand up because it doesn't have that memory. And it would just, it wouldn't even, see, I push this down and it kind of pops back up. It wouldn't. It would just be completely drapey, which if that's what you're going for, that is great. If you're looking for something that's going to stay up and keep you warm, not so much which is a seg into that one I tacked on being insulation or warmth. Um, yet another complex plex subject, but a brief thing, wool is going to be warmer than silk and bamboo. It's just the way it is. Um, if you wanted to lighten up your wool and make it less warm, you add silk or bamboo and that's gonna lighten it up. Um, if you get into your camelid fibers, you get into your alpacas and your camels and things like that, they actually provide more warmth. The insulation factor is higher 
um, but with a finer fiber so you can get something that's just as warm as wool but in a thinner fabric which is sometimes desirable so insulation and warmth is definitely a factor that comes into play when planning these blends um, if you think of these blends kind of like a party it's planning the party and you know planning your food for the party and you got to make sure that you have the guacamole and the queso and the pigs in the blanket but that doesn't mean that one of these things is better than the other thing it just means that you want to have all the elements to ensure that you have your awesome party and then so i did um memory which required the most explanation drape a little bit less explanation i think hopefully that made sense to you uh insulation is simply how warm of a fiber it is and then strength which really is the least amount of explanation it's just really how strong is that fiber this is an area where the structure of the yarn comes into play very specifically i mean just take your yarn and pull on it as hard as you can see if it pops apart uh, a single ply yarn is rarely going to be uh, strong enough to withstand that because it doesn't have the plies the more plies the stronger it's going to be and there are different plying structures that make it even stronger but wool is pretty strong i mean it's not a weak fiber wool is definitely stronger than your camelids um because it does have the grabbiness as opposed to an alpaca or a camelid those are um they're weaker in one way and not in the other they're strong fibers all those wools kind of are in the same area but silk and bamboo are actually stronger and here we've gotten finally to bamboo and what bamboo is is a what's considered a cellulostic fiber it's a, a cellulose based fiber which they all kind of find fall into a basic kind of rayon-y category and what rayon is is they take a cellulose a plant fiber a tree-ish kind of fiber squish it all down like they're making you know boil it all down like they're making paper and then extrude it and the whole purpose of rayon is they were trying to make fake silk they were trying to mimic the properties of silk so the the things that silk brings to a party are very similar to the things that bamboo brings to a party with one interesting little tidbit that bamboo is actually has some antibacterial properties even after washes it's just something inherent to it and bacteria when I mean, bacteria gets into something you've knit or the fibers it's what makes it stink so bamboo can be a good thing to add into something like oh, socks that will reduce your stink factor or like maybe a washcloth where it might be exposed to bacteria so those are something that some pe some people sell on that but getting back to silk and bamboo silk and bamboo are going to bring strength they're going to bring drape because they have very little memory um and they're gonna bring the final thing i haven't mentioned is a shine uh these fibers have a luster to them that brings a lot of depth to a fabric um, again back to our 100% silk you can see it has like uh, I mean it's like shiny and it has a reflective quality that a wool it isn't really going to have if we look at this um, camel silk you can see it has the shine now why would we want to blend camel and silk well let's apply what we've learned the silk is going to bring strength and it's going to bring shine and it's going to bring drape so that's why it's going to be excellent for lace and it's going to drape beautifully so if you wanted to make a, a loose shawl or something like that or a lighter weight sweater but camel is going to bring a lot of warmth to the party it's going to make it a warmer piece than it would have been had it just been 100 percent silk and it's going to bring a little spring back it's going to bring a little memory to the party so it's something that if it gets heavier it's not going to droop entirely the way that a silk would um okay so there we go that is a really basic overview of wool silk and bamboo wool it's gonna bring strength a little bit 
not as much as silk, but it's strongish. It's going to bring memory. It's going to hold things together and it's going to bring warmth. If you add silk to it, it's going to make it stronger, but it's also going to make it have less memory. It's going to make it drapier, but it's going to make it a little more shiny. So it's, it does all kinds of fun things. Like when I'm designing a heavily beaded shawl, I like going for a wool silk blend because the silk in it is going to give it more strength to hold up against those beads. But the wool is going to give it some pullback. I mean, if you can beat 100% silk, but those beads are going to pull down on that silk because the silk doesn't have memory. So the wool is going to hold it in its shape better. It's not going to completely droop. So it, it's, it's a tug and pull. And the thing is, is the bamboo is going to behave very similarly to your silk, except for it's cheaper, <laughs> which is a plus. Now, one thing I should remember, mention is I've been telling you that both silk and bamboo are strong when dry. Most of these cellulostic fibers, because they are manufactured fiber, and, and, and silk, which is a manufactured fiber, but it's manufactured by uh, little wormy things, <laughs> um, when they're wet, they're delicate. So when you are doing the actual blocking of them, you need to be careful with them because they're delicate when they're wet. Once they're dried and set, they're set. They're gonna hold their shape. And at that point, they're pretty darn strong. So I hope that this has given you a better understanding. And I hope I answered your question, Adina, of wool and silk and bamboo. Again, it's just a basic overview. There's so much more that can be discussed about all different kinds of fibers. If you have any questions, please ask me in the comments or over on Watch Barbara Knits if you need any clarification about anything that I've said in this video, or if you're just like, you're totally wrong. I am perfectly willing to hear that I might be wrong about something because I learn new things every day. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, click that like button. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload a new video, please subscribe to my channel and select notifications. Thank you so much.